Hello everybody, this is Max Neeson at Happy Camping RV. Today we're talking about the Lance 2375. This is a 2020 model year. Uh, we'll be doing a walkthrough for a customer and I figured I'll take advantage of the opportunity to do a walkthrough with uh, everybody who wants to watch this video. So we're going to start off uh, today uh, with the front part of the camper. One of the first things you're going to come across is your battery compartment. We currently supply GP27 deep cycle RV marine batteries to our customers. You have a compartment here and a compartment on the other side as well. You want to make sure that you are aware that if you decide to uh, put a second battery in, to make sure you use two of the same brand batteries. This system works by just lifting up this latch, sliding it out. As you can see, the battery is all installed. It does have a strap here to hold the battery in. And close that. It'll latch back in. And go ahead and close the door. Push and turn. You want to make sure you push and turn all your little latches like this. The reason behind that is you want to make sure that you get past the gasket right here at the bottom. Or right here, sorry, apologize. You'll notice a little dirt. We still got to clean it a little more. Uh, we're getting ready for it to go out here in a day or two, so we got to do our detailing crew to come in and clean it. Right below that, we have a solar panel hookup. This is an external solar panel hookup. It is separate from the solar panel that uh, hookup that's inside. Now this particular camper comes with a 190 watt solar panel, it has its own controller inside the camper. This controller, I'm sorry, this plug is separate from that. So if you decide to get yourself a separate plug or a separate solar panel, you can hook up that solar panel, stick it in the sun, and run a cable to here. That will go directly to your battery and charge your battery. Now, I would recommend at least a minimum of 80 watts and purchase a solar panel that has its own controller. So that way, it will not overcharge the batteries. In this compartment here, this camper actually comes with electric stabilizers. These two buttons control the stabilizers on this side. The front button, right here, controls the front stabilizer. The rear button controls the rear stabilizer. On the other side, again, you will have a button for the front and a button for the back. The only difference is you'll have an on and off button in the center. Moving on, you have your outdoor storage. The outdoor storage consists of two things. You have the table that actually slides out. The table does come with its own legs, so you can actually leave the table in the camper like this, or you can take it completely out and actually have set up the legs and put the table wherever you want. Once you slide that back into place, you do have this lower storage drawer that does unlock and slide out. That way, if you want to put a bunch of stuff in, you can actually roll it in. Now, this is actually very helpful because Lance has decided on the other side of the trailer now it is not a pass-through storage anymore. They've actually installed an enclosed compartment to carry a generator. Inside this compartment is a lug wrench and your battery kill switch. The lug wrench does come with a three quarter inch socket on it. And the battery kill switch, you just turn and pull it out. Back to the pull out storage drawer. If you can see, depending if there's any light back there, you can see that there is you know, a wall back there. So that's why this is nice to have. Inside this compartment, there's also a light that you could push, push on the glass and it turns on pushing the glass to shut it off and then the little switch right here when you flip that switch on it turns on the LED lights on the front of the camper right there these doors have what they call slam latches on them you can see that slam latch right there just close it just like that that's what it's meant for you'll also notice a magnet right there and that magnet right there so when you open the door 
it'll stay open. This camper does come with dual pane argon gas filled windows. All the windows on the Lance camper are all the same. Design at least with the dual gas, I'm sorry, dual pane argon gas filled windows. This 2375 does come with two doors. This is the lift assist handle. You just lift it up, fold it out. Again, you can lift it up and fold it in to help keep the door closed. The idea here is you can do the deadbolt and you can lock the door, but if for some reason the door pops open, this will kind of somewhat help the door stay closed until you can pull over and, and take care of it. Some other features on this camper is you do have outdoor speakers. There's one and two. On this camper you have three zones, zone A, zone B, and zone C. We will talk about one of those zones once we're inside the trailer. You'll notice in the center here, there's a light that is a uh, dual light. So you have white and amber. Right below that light, you have the access panel to your refrigerator. I never really tell a lot of people that, you know, to, to go back there and play with anything. We want to make sure that everything stays uh, up to uh, manufacturer specs. If you feel you want to get inside of it for any reason to play around or to at least look at it, that's fine, or to clean it out. But I wouldn't go back there and touch anything, especially if it's under warranty. You want to make sure that it stays covered both by the manufacturer and or the dealer. Right below that is going to be your exhaust outlet for your furnace. Again, we'll talk more about that once we go inside. Not a lot to really do back here in the back of the furnace other than knowing if it's going to be if it's actually hot or not. Now, you may not hear the furnace start up, but what you can always do is if you think it started, you can always come outside here and put your hand right here and you'll know that it's really really hot, and if it's not hot, then it obviously never lit. So, just a nice little tip to know what's going on there. Right next to that, you're gonna see this weird block on the side of the camper, side of the trailer. Uh, that's actually for your exterior TV mount. So if you have a, a television that you wanna put outside, Lance actually supplies you with the side that goes on the television. So you can bolt it to the television and then put it on the outside here. Now, of course, if you do that, you're gonna want some connections and that's where these come in down here. Down here, you're gonna have 12 volt USB if you look down a little more here, there's the cable as well up top here. So there's your cable, USB, and 12 volt. And of course over here is your 120. So if you want to plug in with a standard 120 television. Now this for the axles here. We have topped off the air in both the tires. Uh, 65 PSI is what they actually recommend on the tire. We've also torqued down the lug nuts to about 115 according to specs and we've also greased all the axles now in order to access the axles they are an easy lube axle you're going to notice there's a little lip right here you could pop this cap off once you pop that cap off you pop off the rubber um, gasket that's inside and there should be a little zerk fitting right inside put your grease gun on and start filling it up once you see new grease start coming around the corner inside the bearing you can stop now I think Lippert, or Dexter I should say, uh, says you can uh, um, repack the bearings I think every 10 or 12 years. We've always found it safe and a comfortable way to tell people to uh, keep an eye on the bearings is uh, grease the bearings at least once every fall and you can repack them every 7 to 10 years. Now of course if you're doing a lot of traveling, most, some people may only do couple hundred miles maybe a thousand miles a year but if you're doing at least three to five thousand a year then obviously you may have to do it sooner but always check on the Dexter website or contact Lance or your local dealer for the proper information so that way you can stay on top of maintaining these now one of the things that I always tell all my customers is doesn't matter if you're buying an expensive unit or a cheap unit Maintenance is key. The more you know about your trailer and how to maintain it and how to stay on top of it, the better you, you build it'll last, it last longer for you. Moving on, this right here is your vent. 
for your fan inside above your stove. It's a little hard to open. And I don't know if you can see it with all the light here, but there's actually a little tab here that should pop open. And then you can push down on the tab to close it. It's a little hard to do. With enough practice, you'll get it. Right down here is your water heater. Again, you just turn this. There's your water heater. This right here is your pressure relief valve. And this right here is where you drain the tank. Right next to that, this is where you fill the fresh water tank. Now for anyone who doesn't know, there are two water sources when it comes to a trailer. You have the fresh water tank and then the city water connection. The fresh water tank is when you fill up the fresh water tank, exactly the way it sounds. However, you got to keep in mind, when water is sitting in the tank, how do you get it to your faucet? Take a second and answer that question. If water is sitting in the tank, how do you get it to your faucets? Well, the answer would be a water pump. So from now on, whenever you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to fill up the fresh water tank, that means I have to use the water pump. Now, how is, it, how is the other connection any different? Well, when we get to it, I'll show it to you, but the other connection is different because the other connection is a city water connection, which comes from a city spigot, which already has a PSI pressure. So the pressure from that spigot will already be pushed out and pushed right into your, into your camper, right through your lines, right to your faucets. The city water connection does not fill up any tanks. It goes right to the water lines, right to your faucet. Again, if you have more questions about that, contact your local dealer or call me, Max, at Happy Camping RV anytime. I'd be more than happy to explain that in more detail for you. Your main door for the 2375. Now, one cool tip here, when this light over here, right there, is white, there is a white light that will turn on down here, which is pretty cool. Now, let's talk about the big awning. This is a large, latitude, carefree awning. As you'll notice, the arms are not on the side. They're actually mounted the same way as the awning is. When the awning goes out, I'm going to demonstrate it for you a little later. It will over retract. When it over retracts, it's just part of a cycle. Do not worry about that. Now this awning is equipped with a wind sensor awning. Keep in mind that the wind sensor awning is only active if the on switch is obviously pushed on. If the awning switch is off, then obviously the awning will not come in and this wind sensor will not work as well. Hopefully we've touched a lot on this side. Let's move to the back side. All right, here we are at the rear of our camper. We are a trailer. You see that there's a sturdy ladder, very, very sturdy ladder. There's your bumper. That bumper is uh, for your sewage hose. It does have the cap down here that you could pop that cap off like so and then put your sewer hose inside now one of the things I want you to know is the back of this camper all the lights are LED lights okay now the reason why I'm talking about this is because that backup camera the power to that backup camera is activated by the power to the lights. So if you want to use that backup camera, you have to turn on your running lights. Now right off the bat, you maybe think, okay, well, this is no problem. Once it gets dark out, my lights will turn on. However, some people don't realize you can actually use the backup camera while you're driving down the road. If you want to see what's behind you, you just need to take the lights off of auto and put your lights on your vehicle so your running lights are on.
let's move to the other side. So here's the other side. The first thing we're going to talk about is right down here. That right there is your fresh water dump. So if you want to dump the water out of your fresh water tank, you can pull that lever and it will dump all of the water out. I would suggest doing it over pavement or putting down some type of board or cardboard underneath there so it doesn't put a hole in the ground. It will come out pretty fast. Now let's talk about the slide out here. This system is called a Schwintec. The Schwintec is built by Lippert. The way this system works is three components. The switch inside, a sink box, and the motors. There's a motor on one side of the top and a motor on the other side of the top. When you push the button, the sink box tells the motors to work together to go out. And make sure it makes sure that both motors work together so the slide out goes out correctly. Without the sink box, the motors might kind of fight each other. Now, one of the things you want to be aware of, a lot of people ask, is how do I push the slide out in if there's ever an issue? You have to find the sink box. On the sink box, you're going to find a small little square opening. Inside that small square opening is a little button. Push that button seven times, and on the seventh time, hold it and wait for the lights to flash. Red and green. When they're flashing, that means the slide out sink system has been bypassed. Now, you can go ahead and push the button, and it will activate the motor that is working in a little bit, and then you can push on the side that is not working. If you don't remember all this, again, feel free to give me a call. I'll be happy to explain it all. All right, let's move on. You'll also notice that we actually have slide toppers on all of our slide outs. Now, being this is a 2375, it does not come with the large U-shaped dinettes. So thus, you do not get that large storage, but you do get the smaller storages. One. And two. Moving on over here, we have your power. Now, I always like to always break down the power into three different sections. Section one, 30 amp, which is your hookup right here, which is a right this cable right to a 30 amp hookup or power supply. When you're on a 30 amp power supply, you can use everything in the camper. You can use the AC, television, lights, microwave, you can use it all. Keep in mind though, that when you're plugged in, four to six amps go to charging your battery. So you probably won't be running a full 30 amps if your battery isn't that full. Now, if your battery is full, you'll have all 30 amps, or at least 28 or 29. Now, we supply all our customers with a starter kit. In that starter kit is a 30 to 15 amp adapter, or if you want to call it a 30 to 20 amp adapter, whatever the outlet at home is, standard outlet that you have at home. Some people have 20, some people have 15. Now, when you're running on 15 amps, when you plug this cable into the adapter and then plug it into a standard outlet, you're going to have 15 amps. Again, if you don't have a, a char fully charged battery, four to six amps are going to go to your battery. At this point in time, I would not recommend using the AC. And if you don't know what AC stands for, I actually mean the air condition. Okay? Because the air condition needs at least all of 15, if not more amps, to start and to run consistently. So I would definitely not use the AC on 15 amps. And also, I would try to use what I call the and or option, the microwave or the hair dryer or the toaster oven or whatever you have. Now, if you're confused by 15 amps, I also mean the 110 volt or 120 volt power source at your house. So 30 amp, this is your, your first section. Your second section is your 15 amp. And your third section is what they call boondocking. It's where I take this cable and I unplug this. There's no, no 
uh, power to this outlet at all. Okay, we unplug this. So now you're running on the batteries. That's called 12 volt. Everything inside the Lance Camper, except for the AC, the microwave, and the power outlets, are still usable because everything runs on 12 volt or propane. If you have any questions, just let me know. Moving on down the line here, we're going to start up top here. First things first, we have your outside shower. Now, some people think outside shower, and they have every reason to think that it's an outside shower. However, I look at this more like an outside faucet. You know, if you want to set up a shower here on the side of the camper, you know, with a shade and everything, absolutely go right on ahead. However, most people use it just as a faucet to wash your feet off, wash the dishes. The nice thing is, is that you do have hot and cold, so you can use it as such. Just make sure that when you're done using it, you make sure you shut off both the hot and the cold. Otherwise, they could mix behind the valves and you'll get lukewarm water in your shower. Now, back earlier in the video, we talked about city water connection. That's what this guy is right here. Now, before we talked about a fresh water tank, that was your tank. This right here is going to be your city water connection. This is where you're going to hook up a hose from the spigot, from the campsite, that's going to put pressure into your camper and send water directly to your faucets. Okay, next let's talk about the black tank flush. The black tank flush is where you hook up a hose to this black connection right here. It's a standard hose connection. Once you hook a hose to it and turn the water on, there'll be a sprinkler system inside your black tank that will turn on. It'll help wash everything down and wash it out. Now, since we're talking about washing things out, down here is your black and gray drain. That black cover right there, you just twist to turn off. And then you can pull your black handle, which is this one on this side, and then pull your gray handle over here. Now, you always want to make sure you pull your black, you want to leave them closed when you're camping. Read the gauges inside to see if they're full or not. When you get to your campsite and you want to dump, you pull the black first, let it empty out, then pull the gray, and that will wash out your hose. Now, most people, depending on what they're doing, may use the restrooms at the campsite. So and thus, if they end up just using the regular sink water, then you would just drain just the black tank. Correction, I mean the gray tank, I apologize. The gray tank is your sink and shower water. Your black handle, or your black tank, will be for your toilet water. So if you're going to the bathroom at the campsite, but you're using the water in the camper, then all you have to do is empty your gray water. But obviously if you use the bathroom or the toilet, then you will have to empty the black tank. Down here is Lance's new storage box. It's actually meant to store your power cable. That guy right there. Because that power cable gets all dirty. It'd be nice to put it somewhere where it was not in a compartment that it would dirty your compartments. So, there you go. Now we're back over here to that generator storage area we talked about earlier. We'll jump over that and come right over here. Here is... The other switches we talked about for the stabilizers. Again, there's your front one for the front, back one for the back, and right in the center is the power button. If you shut that off, none of your stabilizers will work. Once you turn that on, your stabilizers will work. Now let's jump ahead here to the front. This particular camper comes with three tanks. Only two tanks are hooked up at a time, as you can see. One here and one right there. Now, if you look close, you're gonna see that this little handle has an arrow on it. That arrow is pointing to this tank, and thus the gauge is green, letting you know that this tank is full and that you are good to go. Now, if you come up here and you check this, and you see this is red, that means this tank is empty. However, the regulator itself has already switched over to this tank automatically. In order to get an accurate reading, then you'll have to rotate this handle over to this tank, and then this gauge will go back to being green because now it's reading this tank. Put that back.
back where it was. Now, as for the front here, you do have an electric tongue jack. There are some really cool directions on what you can do with this tongue jack, from the setting the hitch height to auto recalling the hitch height to auto retracting. We can demonstrate this later on if you like. If you want more information on that, let me know. But again, some really cool features on the Smart Jack. Now, let's go inside the camper. Here we are inside the 2375 Lance. This particular model comes with the J Lounge. Now, the J Lounge does open up to a bed. This part right here, these two cushions, do lift up like a futon. So you just lift them up the center here and it flips out to a bed. You'll also notice down here and here are your recliners. Now the backs don't go back, but the feet do come up. Now there's something I do want to show you. Give me one second. Now as this comes up, now normally when you're sitting in this, you might just want to push it down to go back down. However, you got to be careful. You actually have to take your ankles, the back of your ankles, and pull towards you to release the lock. There's actually a locking mechanism here that locks this down so it can't go down. But once you release that lock by pulling back, it does release it. You do have some storage up top. There's a speaker right there and a light right there. Now, there is some switches we're going to talk about here in a second, okay? These, actually, we'll talk about these two switches really quick. This one right here says SO mood. This one right here actually controls, if you look over here, the lighting above the slide out. This courtesy light, where it says courtesy here, controls the light right above my head. All the other lights that are on the ceiling actually have a very small switch here. You slide side to side. By sliding it side to side, it turns on. Let's finish talking about these switches over here. This one right here is your slide out switch. Really easy to use. You push and hold the in button. And the slide out comes in. If I let go and I push and hold the out button, the slide out goes out. Pretty simple. Up top here is your awning controls. There's on and off and on. You can also hit retract or extend. Now, when the awning is out all the way, you may want to turn on the LED lights. The LED lights are going to be right here. So, for example, if I was to push this right now, hit extend, our awning will go out. Now, you notice I don't have the door open because you have to be careful. When the arms are going out, the door will hit the arms unless the door is all the way open or all the way closed. Now that the awning is pretty much open, I can open the door. Now see how the awning over retracted there for a second? That's okay, that's a part of the cycle. Now when I come back inside here, flip on the lights, there are your lights. Now I do want to demonstrate something for you, like I said I would. I'm gonna come outside, I'm gonna close the door all the way. I'm actually gonna walk to this part of the trailer. This particular piece is where the wind sensor is located. Now, we don't have a lot of wind today, but I'm gonna demonstrate the wind by just shaking it. When I shake it, you'll notice that the awning is automatically winding up. That is what they call the wind sensor. Once the wind picks up 15 miles per hour or more, and the wind senses it, it will automatically come in. Now, Hans and I and myself both recommend not to rely on that wind sensor because look how slow the awning is rolling in. It's taking quite a bit, taking some time. I don't know about you, but wind is not going to wait. If the wind's going to come, it's going to take the awning. Let's head back inside. 
here we are back inside the 2375 just to kind of give you a general overview of a few things here there's your kitchen entertainment center and your dinette now we talked about all the switches up there in that corner let's look around a little bit and see what else we have down here you have your spice rack you also have yourself an outlet key holder and your fire extinguisher you're probably asking what those round things are those are your furnace vents have a three drawers right here making our way up kitchen sink still the microwave let's look at the kitchen in more detail first things first let's talk about the microwave this particular microwave does have a slight change to it no carousel not 100 sure why a new style they're always coming with something different and something new pretty cool technology moving below that remember that fan vent we talked about outside well right here's your fan vent turn that on and you also have an led light pretty cool right below that is our glass top stove now you do want to be careful this you want to flip this and then flip it again down here you're going to push and turn to the flame over here you'll light the spark all you do is just spark it once and it should light up and you can do that to all three now with the oven though you will have to do it a little bit of old school when you open this up down at the bottom here all the way in the back i don't know if we can see it or not all the way to the back there that's where you're going to try to put your flame up here you're going to turn this put it to pilot and then you're going to push and hold and that's going to release gas down here and that's when you take your lighter and you light that once that lights up you're going to hold that button still for an additional 15 seconds for it to really kind of burn then you can let go and it should stay lit Below the stove, you have your converter and your fuse box. Right next to that is your CO propane detector. They are labeled. And you do have your breakers and your fuses. Now, this right here is your seal propane detector. There's a couple reasons that might go off. That may go off if you, one, have a low battery, two, if there is a CO or propane leak, or three, if it picks up a smell or scent similar to CO or propane. Now, while we're down here, I want to show you something over here behind this cabinet area you can store some stuff but also behind here you'll notice that is your hot water heater it's the rear of your hot water heater now we're going to talk about in here there's your water pump okay now there's a valve right it's hard to see here there's a valve right there that valve the one you turn right there is for winterization when you turn the pump on you can see that the valve is in line with the white hose when you turn the pump on it's going to suck water from the freshwater tank but when you turn that valve so it's facing the clear one the clear tube that is where you're you're going to put that clear tube into your antifreeze and then it will suck antifreeze into the system now before you do all that you have to put the water heater into bypass mode as well and you do that by using that valve see how the valve is in line with the blue line 
when you go to winterize it or bypass, you want to crank it straight up so it's vertical with the other boot iron. If you need more information about winterization, feel free to call me anytime and I can help you out. So we talked about a majority of your kitchen so far. Got your sink. Let's talk about some of these switches right here. So first things first, we have four buttons here. Battery, fresh, black, and gray. If I push and hold the battery button, you're going to see that four of these lights all light up. That means it's full. If I push the fresh water, that's about two-thirds full. The black and the gray are both low or empty. You're over here, you're going to see the water pump is on. How do we know it's on? Because the pump light is on. Also, if we step over here and open up our faucet, the water pump is on. Hot or cold. The next one we're going to talk about is your water heater. Now you'll notice this one says water heater. If I get close enough, water heater, water heater. Why is there two water heaters? Simple. One is gas and one is electric. You can run it on gas or you can run it on electric. Now, one of the common questions I do get is, can I run it on both? Absolutely, you could run it on both. It will not hurt the water heater to run it on both. Some people prefer gas, some people prefer, prefer propane. Down here is your galley lights. You're going to see one that says sink and soffit. Soffit will be right up top. And your sink will be right down here. Now let's move on to the refrigerator here. Let's actually talk, talk about up above the refrigerator. Above the refrigerator is your solar panel control. Now, you don't need to know a whole lot about this. All you have to do is know the basics. The basics are right now, you can tell it from the sun to the battery. If I hit the boot button actually, you can scan through the different settings. There's 2.4 amps coming into the battery. You're 100% full. 13.7 volts and 46 amp hours. Gives you all the readings. And all you got to do is just tap that blue B button. Some may ask, well, what else does the panel do? This panel does a lot more than even I know. But the basic thing is, is that all you got to know is that touch that B button, it'll give you the stats, and that's all you have to do. Now let's move on to the refrigerator here. This is going to be a nor cold refrigerator. You push the power button, push and hold to turn it on. And then you can choose different modes. This mode is automatic. See the A in the plug? Basically, that means that the refrigerator is on auto. So it will automatically choose the dominant power. When you're plugged into AC, it will choose AC power. If you unplug, it will automatically choose propane. When you plug it back in, it will go back to AC power. But if you want, you can actually select whatever you want. By taking the A away, now you're choosing electric, no problem. Every time, if you unplug, the refrigerator shuts off. Or you can decide to choose propane, if you choose. Or go back to auto. And then, of course, you also have the temperature setting where you can actually adjust how cold you want your refrigerator. Moving over here, we have your radio, there's your power button, there's your zone button for your different zones. Zone A, I'll turn it down, zone B, I'll turn it down, zone C, I'll turn it down. Zone A is going to be right where we are in the main kitchen area. If I turn that back down, zone B will be the bedroom and zone C will be outside you can also choose different modes over here AM FM even Bluetooth 
Now, when you put a DVD in here, it will automatically go to DVD player and will automatically turn your television on. Now, to release the TV from its little compartment here, see how it already came on? Because we have it on HDMI. Let me shut this off. Let me shut this off here. Underneath the television here, you can't quite see it. Let me turn the flashlight on here. There's this little carabiner here. Okay. If you pull down this little carabiner, little sash, it releases the television. It releases the television from its lock. As you can see, here's the lock here, and you can see the latch up top here. Okay, that will hook onto this piece right here. That's why it's important that this elbow always goes that direction so that this piece sits flat against this hook in order to latch properly. Now I do want to go over some of the features that are up over here. First things first, up top is a 120 volt power source. If you decide to plug it in there, you can. There's your 12 volt power source. That's what the TV is powered by. This is a 12 volt TV. Down here, we'll start with the bottom one is your HDMI cable. That comes from the wall to your television. That connection is what is ran to your, your uh, radio. Up here is your cable hookup. Now I'm going to shut my light off because I want you to see something. See how there's a green light that's on right there? There's actually a button right next to here that if I push this button, that light shuts off. When this light is off, signal for this cable source comes from outside. If we forgot to go over that, it's actually going to be directly under the power supply. So we back up the video and you'll see it's just under, under this power supply. Now, if you want to do it from your antenna, you want to push that because when you push that, it sends power to your King's Jack antenna. Now, you will have to make sure that it's on right here. Oh, and there's power. Then you can just push this button right here and rotate to get yourself a better signal. We're in a very low area, so there's hardly any signal. And don't forget to shut this off. Now, television will get pushed back, and you want to make sure you hear it lock. Hopefully you heard that lock. Down here are some connections that will run to your bedroom. Uh, you have to look up the uh, in the Lance manual how they hook it up, but this will run signal to the television source in the bedroom if you choose you want television in there. This right here is your slide out. If you want to open these drawers, Make sure you push the button, let it release, then open. Nice big drawer. Go ahead and close it. Push and lock it in. Now over here, we have a couple goodies. First things first, we have the outside television bracket we talked about for your television. There's your backup camera. This wrench right here is actually a backup for your stabilizers. So if the electric stabilizers don't work, you can put this on and you can still lower your stabilizers. Those blankets there actually button up up here. Now I'm going to close this so you can see. Now you can see the button snaps. And that's how you button up those blankets to keep it warm in the camper. Now you will have one, two, and if I'm correct, two more. Uh, one in the bathroom and one in the bedroom, which we will look at in a little while. Let's head on into the bedroom. A couple cool features here. First things first. The 2375 does have the feature where you unbutton 
this and has a solid wooden door. Don't forget Lance does supply you with a clock, which is pretty cool. Some people do ask about how to take this off the wall. All you have to do is just turn it, have it come off, play back on. Now, since we're here, let's talk about this little fancy machine here. This is going to be for your AC and your furnace. Whenever you're going to use this, you always push it once to wake it up. Then you can push the bottom bar to select the mode you want. So let's say I want the fan. I just pushed it once. Let it shut off. I mean, let the color go down. And the fan will come on. Wake it up again. And keep pushing till I get cool AC. Or cool low, cool high, cool auto. Or even the heat. Or go to off. And then, of course, if you want to adjust the temperature, you can go up or down. Over here, cool storage area, you just lift this little piece here, slide it out, bring it back in. Close that. You do have one down here as well. Some more storage over here, but let me get to the other side of it so you can see it better. Storage up top. And a bunch of storage down below. Now the bottom one does have its own light and a bar to hang clothes. Let's head over here. Now, just so you know, we're walking back down the hallway to go into, into this door. This door right here is going to be your bathroom. Some storage over here, some storage above it. Here's your toilet in the corner. And that's your bathroom. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize about the crazy camera settings and all little imperfections, but uh, this is my first video that I'm doing for YouTube and uh, for my guests as well. Obviously, during these COVID times, uh, they uh, chose to do a virtual walkthrough, so I'm trying to do my best to be able to get all the information I can. And if there's anything I ever missed, please feel free to call me anytime uh, at happycampingrv.com or, I'm sorry, happy camping, or go to our website, happycampingrv.com. Our number at the dealership is 891, sorry, 518-891-5779 getting all mixed up because I'm talking too fast <laughs> again my name is Max we're almost done let's finish up here we go so this is the bedroom now the cool thing about a Lance is Lance has all come with a true queen now what does that mean it's a true 60 by 80 queen mattress it is not an RV queen now an RV queen is 60 is a 60 by 76 versus 60 by 80 Lance does also provide you with a Serta mattress. It is a real comfortable Serta mattress. Now, ideally, not every mattress is going to, this mattress is not going to fit everyone because it's always different. However, I've had a lot of my customers say that they found this one very comfortable and they did not have to switch. To this side of the bedroom, as we look up on this wall, those are your TV sections, the TV connections I was telling you about. This one does come with a large window on one side, storage on one side, and storage on the other. Over here, you have a 120 volt power source, USB, 12 volt, 
and a light switch. Now this light switch here, put this on, turns on those LED lights and turns on the LED lights up top and on the other side. You'll also notice these little lights over here. These are your reading lights. We can go ahead and shut those off. Now back in 2019, early 19, they only had these on one side, but Lance did decide to put them on the other side as well, which was a good option. I think it was a good, good decision. You also get your own little drawers. Drawer on each side. And of course, don't forget, the bed does lift up. So this over here is your fantastic fan. Now this is a newer style that Lance put in that actually comes with a remote. So don't forget your remote. All your windows, because they do not come with a cracked glass look anymore, do come with a shade in the screen. This will be in the front window and in the back window. Now my walkthroughs are typically pretty detailed. I know there's probably things I did miss because I'm not used to doing a video walkthrough. But hopefully we touched base on a lot of majority to help you guys learn about these campers. For more information about Lance Campers, how to operate them, or just the int intricate details of any of the tech questions, feel free to call myself, Hans, or Pam, or Rob, here at Happy Camping RV, 518-891-5779. Hope you guys enjoyed your walkthrough on the 2375. Enjoy your day.